Welcome to the Mirror of the World, and I want to say thank you for joining today. My name is Buki Adioshun, and I'm your regular host on the program. Before we start, I would like us to say a short prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, because I believe that someone that is going to watch this video now we receive what they are looking for in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you because you will show us what you want us to see in your words today. And whatever you show us in your words, our lives will be transformed into it. Those words will be written in our hearts. It will bring salvation. It will bring deliverance. It will strengthen, it will uphold, it will encourage someone. Lord, I thank you because at the end of this video, we will be full of praises to your name in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I, I, I am fully persuaded, you know, I perceive the lord is going to speak to someone today in jesus name you know um i remember some years ago i preached in a church and uh about two or three years later i was in another church and the person you know came visiting and i was walking up the stairs case and a woman walked up to me and uh she said how are you sir so we started you know uh, exchanging you know pleasantries and then and she mentioned the message that i preached about two years before that time and i said wow you mean you still remember that i say how can someone forget such a message uh that's what is going to happen today the lord is going to give you a word not me because i am his messenger so the focus is not me i don't want you to see me i don't want you to look at it and say uh who, who is this man you know feeling so confident about himself no i don't want you to look at that at all i want you to say it that uh the lord is going to say something that i've been looking for through him today in the name of jesus the lord will give you great joy joy unspeakable in the mighty name of jesus you know um today this video we're broadcasting this video on a sunday i don't know when you are going to be watching it but let me tell you you will have good reason to face the month to face the week and every fear will be gone in the mighty name of jesus the lord will strengthen you the lord will up hold you the lord will encourage you the lord will give you hope for tomorrow in the name of jesus i declare in the mighty name of jesus that there's going to be a way out for you in jesus every oppositions in your life will be silent in the name of jesus the lord will raise you up you will bounce back in the mighty name of jesus look let me tell you something uh these are not just words to you know boost or to raise your emotions or things like that these these are prophetic words these are words that you receive into your spirit man and they strengthen you they encourage you know the the plan of the devil is to make sure that you are defeated on the inside you know once you are defeated there's nothing anybody can do uh once you've made up your mind there's nothing anybody but your spirit man will be restored today will be revived today um i am doing what the lord asked me to do the lord wants me to pray for somebody today so that they may be restored I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will restore you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord will restore you, the spirit, soul, and body, and make you whole. In the name of Jesus, receive a sound mind right now. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that every news that is worrying you, everything that you have had that disturbed you, I command that by the blood of Jesus they are wiped away in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we've been reading the books of Acts. And today we are going to continue and we have captioned our topic for discussion today. We are reading Acts, Acts chapter 12 today. Uh, we've captioned our topic for discussion today. Pray for one another that you may be restored. Now you can understand why I'm starting with prayer today. I have a specific instruction. So I want you to wait until the end of the video. I have a specific instruction to pray for you to to bring you out to lose you uh from that place where you have been tied to release you uh by the power of the holy spirit i'm not the one who is going to do it uh is the lord who is going to do his work but you remember there was a man placed by the beautiful gate and uh, everyone passed by that gate all the time in acts of apostles chapter 3 that we read uh, but it came to a point in time that Peter saw the man. He says, silver and gold I have none. I may not come to your house. Uh, I'm not able to come to your house right now. Uh, but look, something that I know that is going to happen to you is that the Lord will deliver you. The Lord will send his angels. They will deliver you. They will open gates that have been locked on you. In the name of Jesus, they will remove every chains, every bondage. They will do every yoke will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. You know, why do I have so much confidence about what I'm talking about? You say, God will never never let me down because he's a good god you know uh, he gave me a word and i believe that word he he gave me a word he said look um uh what people are looking for they will find it through your messages is a covenant word is a covenant word between me and god and i believe god that god will never let me down so if you believe in those prayers, uh, you're going to send in your testimony. You are going to rejoice. You're going to bless the name of the Lord. But I, I don't want you to say that it's got nothing to do with me. Like Peter said, he said, faith in the name of Jesus made this man Oh, So uh, I, I'm not able to do the recap. <laughs> uh, in, in Acts of Apostles 2, Chapter 11, we said it was in Antioch that they first called people Christians. So they weren't called Christians when Jesus left them or during the time of Jesus. He started in Antioch. And it's interesting that, um, you know, uh, the question, sorry, was that what were they called before they were called Christians? Uh, they definitely, they saw something in them before they called them Christians. Christians are Christ followers christians and necessarily people who go to church there are a lot of people who go to church but they are not christians but christians we go to church christians don't need people to prompt them they go to church early they see the house of god as their father's house i want to encourage you to go and watch that video but let's let's go and read acts of apostles chapter 12 and i believe god has great things i i am expecting great things in your life oh glory be to god the lord will do great things for you and you will be glad in the name of jesus you know the lord has been good to me um and 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 look uh more importantly is that sometimes i don't even ask him for some things and he will just go ahead and do it because he's a good god you will have a similar experience in the mighty name of jesus let's read acts of apostles chapter 12 now about that time 
the king stretched forth his hand to fetch Zatin of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions or soldiers to keep him. Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people, Peter therefore was kept in prison. For prayer was made without ceasing of church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with cha two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel of the Lord and the angel said unto him, Guard yourself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy, ga cast thy garment about you and follow me. And he went out and follow him and wished not that it was true which was done by the angel but thought he saw a vision when they were past the first and the second world they, they came unto the iron gate that led unto the city which opened to them of his own accord and they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him and peter was come to himself he said now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered praying. Hmm. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to Hakin, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad, but she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. For he, beckoning unto them with a hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show those things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed when, and went into another place. Now, as soon as it was day, there was no small stay among the soldiers what was become of Peter. And when Herod had sought for him and found him known, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him and having made blasters the kings of Chamblain. Their friend desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a god and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. But the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. Now, we have captioned the topic, uh, our discussion, we have captioned it, pray for one another. You know, um, God is not asking you, uh, you know, this, 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 this is really interesting because uh, when I look at that story, it says that uh, they were praying for Peter to be released. You probably think that when they were praying, they were also watching. The Bible says that you should pray and you should watch, you know. So we saw the example of Elijah when he prayed. He sent his servant to go and start watching for the signs that it was going to rain. 
uh, even though the Lord told him it will rain. Uh, but in this instance, you know, uh, they prayed and they went actually watching out for the sign. When their prayers were answered and Peter came knocking at the door, uh, what, what, what I found interesting was the young damsel, you know, a little girl who was able to identify Peter's voice. It shows how close they were as a fellowship. I mean, I, I, mean, I saw another thing in that place. Uh, they were praying in the house of mother of John, Mary, the mother of John. Uh, I said there were many praying. Can you imagine in the house, many gathered together praying? I, I wish and I pray that in our days we will have those things back where the, um, the venue of the prayer is not only the church, but you know, we will have houses of prayer where many people will gather together. And they will pray for the deliverance of people. Look, guys, we got no excuse. They didn't have technology. There was no WhatsApp where they could come together and, and pray. They didn't have telephone. They didn't have Zoom. They don't have, they didn't have Skype. All these technologies that enable us to walk virtually from a different parts of the world. And we coming together using the technological platform. They, they didn't have it. But well, yeah, they came together and they pray. Uh, this is a challenge to us. And I want you to take up that challenge to begin to find groups of people that you will come together and then you will pray for one another. So if we don't pray for one another, what's going to happen is that what happened to other people uh, may, actually, um, may actually happen to us. Uh, sometimes as Christians, we can get into the habit of saying, well, uh, it's not yet in my area, it's not going to happen to me. And then because of that, uh, we actually, you know, we, we, we won't increase the tempo of our prayer or we won't pray uh, the way we are supposed to pray. Uh, but it ought not to be like that. We are supposed to pray for one another. Um, yeah, uh, uh, and uh, for example, if we, uh, uh, we see people who are in the Middle East or people in different parts of the world, especially Nigerians, where Christians are being persecuted and they are being killed, you can say, Oh, uh, all the members of my family they are fine, I haven't got any family member in that area. Hey, uh, let me tell you something, it will soon come knocking on your door if you don't do something about it. I want us to know that. Our prayers makes tremendous power available. Uh, we saw right here that, you know, when James, you know, was murdered, uh, they didn't do anything, you know, they didn't do anything. But when they saw that and Peter was picked to be killed, uh, the Bible says they came together and they offered prayers continuously. So that means that if we have uh, one of our brothers and sister that was knocked down by cancer, for example, and we still have another one in the hospital. Hey, there is no harm in praying for them. Even though, like they did, we may not wholeheartedly believe that they are going to be made well because um, of, the, of the signs and symptoms and uh, what the doctors are saying. Okay, but let's pray. Uh, James chapter 5 says we should pray pray for one another that we may be restored james chapter 1 verse uh, james chapter 5 sorry verse 16 confess to one another therefore your faults your slaves your offenses your sins pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored the earnest prayer of a righteous man make tremendous power available dynamic in his work praise the lord so it's important for us to pray for one another paul also says that he said um our our challenges whatever it is that we are going through situations uh, will be turned into salvation through prayer we can say that uh in philippians chapter 1 Verse 19, he said, For I know with confidence that this will turn out for my deliverance and spiritual well being. 
to the spiritual well-being of people improve or increase when we pray for them he said through your prayers and the super abundant supply of the spirit of our lord jesus christ so when we pray for one another there is a supply of the spirit uh, there is always and always in the bible especially when you check the new testament uh, there is a connection thank you lord for this revelation oh thank you lord uh, there is always a connection between the manifestation of the spirit of god and prayer so for example uh, let look let, let, let's just 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 look at this one in acts of apostles chapter one we saw that they gathered together as a matter of fact our lord jesus christ told them do not depart from jerusalem but come together and wait for the holy spirit why they were praying the holy ghost came i believe in uh, in the acts of apostles i think acts of apostles chapter four again uh, they had a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit by what? By coming together to pray. After they prayed, the whole buildings were shaking. Uh, we saw later on, we're going to read, I believe, in Acts of Apostles, chapter 16. So there about, you know, again, uh, when uh, Paul and Silas, we were told that they sing hymns, they sang praises and prayer unto the Lord. The prison foundation was shaking. Uh, we, we saw the story of the house of Colinius praying constantly unto God. I mean, th this guy prayed so much that, oh my God, uh, when Peter got to the house, Peter didn't need to say salvation prayer or anything. They were, they, they, they at Alabaka Shaglan, Zadaba, Agora Kala Laki Zantekeria. Igoro paya la kiki gebo kusa kalanta kile ya bakala bo ora kalati gelekete egele gati gala vaka rakolo kistante kala ya. The Lord is looking for people who is going to saturate the atmosphere with prayer. The Lord is going to is looking for people who will saturate the atmosphere of their children. He's looking for mother who is going to saturate the atmosphere around their children with prayer. The Lord is looking for fathers who are going to lift up holy hands, who is going to saturate the atmosphere around their wife. You, you, you remember when Rebecca didn't have a child. Uh, what happened? We said, and Isaac entreated the Lord. Isaac asked the Lord, prayed for her, and the Lord opened her womb. The Lord is looking for people who is going to saturate the atmosphere in their office with prayer. The Lord is looking for people who is going to saturate the atmosphere in their community with prayer. The Lord is looking for people who is going to satur uh, saturate the atmosphere above their nation with prayer. Prayer make tremendous power available. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, um, as I was praying, uh, the Lord told me to tell you, don't abort that child. That might be the only child that you are going to have. And if you do it, um, you may live to regret it. He said, look, all the people that you are ashamed to face right now, all the people who are condemning you right now, even you are being condemned in your church, Yes, um, you made a mistake. That's fine. Okay. I am not approving it. I am not saying I endorse it. But is this not enough for you to kill that baby? Everyone condemning you right now will rejoice with you later on because of the baby that you are carrying. If only. If only as a result of listening to this video, you will summon the courage to face through the opposition and look up unto God to turn things around for you, um, to, to, to help you with your mistake, you will rejoice in the end. The Lord wants that child to come through you. Don't worry about the circumstance um um as somebody you're watching right now you are a victim 
of rape. I don't have anyone who has been raped and um, I don't, uh, I, 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 I can't tell you I know how it feels. I'm going to be honest with you because people will say I can feel that pain. No, it is only people who have been through it and even though they have been through it, it is not exactly the same experience, okay? But here is the word of the Lord for you. The Lord said he will wipe away your tears. And, uh, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And he said he will put you in the place of comfort that will make you forget that experience. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you. Now, Peter said, Let's wrap up now in Acts of Apostles chapter 12, verse 11. He said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. The Lord will send his angel to deliver you and disappoint the expectation of those who want to bring you down. Now, let me explain this to you because sometimes some of us, when we're talking about angel, angels, you are actually sometimes you are looking at a supernatural being, you know, and a physical something, and, and, and that can happen to you. But sometimes human beings are angels, you know. I never understood that until there was a Christmas time that uh, a brother in our church you know they have uh, relocated from another country i mean not from my country we just met in the church and then the lord just laid upon our heart sometimes i will have to inconvenience my family because we will have to wait for him to take them home and things like that and then send us a card at christmas said you are an angel sent from god to make our settling in comfortable then it done on me that uh Sometimes human beings can play the role of an angel in your life. You know, angels are powerful and they can deliver, they can release people, they can remove the limitation, the bondage, you know, they can open doors for you. So I am fully persuaded that the Lord is going to send an angel, send his angel to you this month. God will send you someone that will open door that you will have never been able to get into with your qualification because of your color because of your accent and what you have but the lord will send somebody that will open the door for you grab you by your hand like the angel you know beckon Unto Peter says, stand up and he will tell you and say, walk right in, in the name of Jesus. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, let me, let me tell you something. The Lord will put it in the Akalega Shaki Gabaka Satege La Magara Kela Laka Zaku Luke Dengra Tugu La La Tanga Era Gala Sakoba Lashtoka Mangura. Mark my word. The application is closed already okay but the lord will send someone to open the application just because of you there will be an extension just because of you so that you may submit your application and so that you can be selected oh somebody tells you and i say but that's not fair oh yeah i know but um life in itself is not fair uh life is not fair because the devil has dealt you blow the circumstance that you find yourself in right now it's not your fault it's not entirely your fault um you are just a victim of circumstance it's not that you're not working hard it's not that you are not praying as you ought to pray it's not that you are not reading your bible it's not that you're not giving your tithe it's not that you're not paying your offering you are just a victim of something that you are not responsible for. But the Lord have decided 
to visit you this month and perform his words in your life. God will send people to help you this month. They will remove the chains, the limitations, the heavy yokes. They will open gates that have been closed on you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will deliver you from what people think will happen to you. You know, the, the, the. thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, we, we read in the Bible that Jesus Christ is about the business of going about uh, doing good. The Lord will do you some good, good things this month in the name of jesus let me close with this job chapter job or job whichever way you want to call it chapter 5 verse 12 says he spoils the plans of even the smartest people he ruins the plan job chapter 5 verse 12 the pretension the strategies of those who want to bring you down People who have planned to bring you down, they have strategized. Um, I was I was reading in the news today the story of Anthony Joshua. How can a man in world in one fight, just one single fight, be stripped of four titles? I mean, that's that's the blow that life can deal with you. You know, that's that's the blow you can get from life. You know, it can happen to anyone. But hey, hey, let me tell you something. The Lord will restore you and the Lord will bring you back. Let, let me end this. This is my prayer for you. Uh, this is the prayer the Lord asked me to say to you. Uh, there came to a point in the life of David, the person who was supposed to be his advisor, you know, to come. With a son, Absalom, who was uh, in rebellion against him, and uh, the counsel of Ahitophel. Go and read it. Second Samuel chapter sixteen, verse twenty-three. He said, "And the counsel of Ahitophel, which he counselled in those days, was as if a man had inquired or at the oracle of God. People respect his counsel. Oh my God! This big man speaks." As if he was speaking directly from God. And David said, Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, every conspiracy against this, your people, every counsel of the wicked one lord i turn it into foolishness right now in the name of jesus lord you will frustrate every plan against this your precious people i declare that every plan is frustrated today in the name of jesus thank you lord let's pray for those who are sick lord i thank you ayala kasantia um someone you have been given a wrong medication um so uh they give you the wrong dosage and you are reacting be up because of that the situation has gone worse because of that and you want to pick it up as a case the lord said don't worry i will restore and i will make things right don't don't make any issue out of it lord i pray in the name of jesus for that person right now make him whole spirit soul and body in the name of jesus thank you lord we give you praise lord thank you for all these miracles and all these healing look i i don't have to call the name of the sickness or whatever it is uh, that's not a sign that um the lord has not answered your prayer or that um you know is not important no not at all 
I just want to believe that when we pray and say you are made whole, you are healed in the name of Jesus, just believe it and just receive your healing. Look, this is what I want you to know. Uh, there were thousands of people pressing in on Jesus in Mark chapter 5. And uh, there were thousands of people at that crusade, at that meeting, but only one woman touched him. Uh, we were told that virtue, you know, the healing power, uh, flowed out from our Lord Jesus Christ into her body. All you need to touch the Lord is your faith. Um, if you have faith, then you will touch the Lord and you will be make, made whole. Uh, if you're, if what is wrong with you, if the Lord reveal it to me, let's just bless the name of the Lord. Uh, I, I don't want you to come back and say something like, oh, pastor, when you declare the word of the Lord. And no, no, I, I don't want no man to worship me. I don't want no man to see me. I want you to see Jesus. He is the focus. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, you want to be born again. You want to experience eternal life look keep telling people it is not an invitation to church is christianity it is not a religion i'm sorry to disappoint you it is an experience um if christianity is a religion when you're talking in terms of things like judaism islam and others yes you can say and i can i'm just saying i mean they said they're religion um catholic they said they are religion that's fine uh, you can see other people, you know, it didn't just start. And when people were called Christians at Antioch, he didn't say that this is a Christian religion. He said it was first in Antioch. We read it together in Acts of Apostles, uh, chapter 11. I'm not preaching heresies, okay? So and they were called something. Probably they were doing, practicing Judaism. I don't know, whatever it is, they were practicing them before they were called Christian, Christ follower. Do you want to be a follower of Jesus? You want, you want, do you want to come to know him? So that's why you can be a member of another religion and not know Jesus. The key thing about this invitation I'm extending to you is for you to come and receive eternal life. For you to come so you may know God. If you, that is your prayer and you want to do that, I want you to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I confess that I am a sinner. I repent of my sins today. I believe you died for me so I can have eternal life. I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for saying that prayer. You're going to see our email address shortly at the bottom of the screen. I want you to... Uh, text us or send us an email, you know, and we're going to send some materials to you that is going to help you grow spiritually. May God Himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put you together, spirit, soul, and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our Master Jesus Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable if He said it. He will do it. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. Visit our YouTube channel. I go on our website. We have some confession cards for you. Uh, and we do this almost every day of the week. There's a program, one program or the other, online prayer meeting on Tuesday. Fridays are online Bible studies is interdenominational. You, we run a ministry where you don't have to come to our church. We are called to the body of Christ and we are not asking you to give offering. Okay. <laughs> uh, we are not we are not asking you. The Lord has provided. Um, so please feel very free, the very free to join the fellowship. Our focus, our goal um is to develop people spiritually. We we want you to connect with God. Uh we want to bring you to a place where you will find worshiping the Lord, you know, exciting. Jesus becomes a personal thing to you. That's what we are believing God for in your life. Thank you so much for uh, joining in this video. Please share on your Facebook page, WhatsApp with your friend, you know, let it go to as far as I cannot go. Thank you so much for your prayers and your support and uh, your partnership, you know, partnership in sharing the word.
God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Bye.